Hey guys, my name is Priyanka Naidu and I'm a student at LF1. Today we're going to talk about the physiology of adrenal gland. Adrenal glands, also known as suprarenal glands, are small, triangular-shaped glands located on top of both kidneys. The main supply to the adrenal gland includes the superior adrenal arteries, which are small branches coming off the inferior phrenic artery, the middle adrenal artery that comes directly off the abdominal aorta, and the inferior adrenal artery that originates from the renal artery bilaterally. So now we're going to talk about the layers of the adrenal gland. An adrenal gland is made up of two main parts, the adrenal cortex, which is the outer region and also the largest part of the adrenal gland. It is divided into three separate zones, zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis. Each zone is responsible for producing specific hormones. The adrenal medulla is located inside the adrenal cortex in the center of the adrenal gland. It produces stress hormones including epinephrine and norepinephrine. Adrenal glands produce hormones in response to signals from the pituitary gland in the brain, which reacts to signaling from the hypothalamus also located in the brain. This is referred to as the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. As you can see in the first picture, when the hypothalamus produces corticotrophin releasing hormone, CRH, it stimulates the pituitary gland to release adrenal corticotrophic hormone, ACTH. These hormones, in turn, alert the adrenal glands to produce corticosteroid hormones. The corticosteroid hormones can be divided into three main classes according to the layer of cortex from which they are produced. Zona glomerulosa produces the first class of hormones called the mineralocorticoids. The principal mineralocorticoid is aldosterone, which maintains the right balance of salt and water while helping control blood pressure. Zona fasciculata produces the second class of hormones known as glucocorticoids, commonly known as cortisol. It regulates how the body converts fats, proteins, and carbohydrates to energy. It also helps regulate blood pressure and cardiovascular function. Zona reticularis produces the third class of hormones known as sex steroids or sex hormones. As we can see in the second picture, the hormones of the adrenal medulla are released after the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated, which occurs when you're stressed. As such, the adrenal medulla helps you deal with physical and emotional stress. You may be familiar with the fight-or-flight response, a process initiated by the sympathetic nervous system when your body encounters a threatening or a stressful situation. Hormones produced by the adrenal medulla are epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now let's talk about androgens. They are produced by zona reticularis and are also called gonadotrophin hormones or sex steroid hormones. It is mainly responsible for the libido in men and women. Next hormone we're going to talk about is cortisol, which is produced by the zona fasciculata. What triggers the hypothalamus to start the process as we can see in this picture? It's either regular stress response or circadian rhythm. In this picture, hypothalamus produces CRH that affects the cells present in the anterior pituitary to release ACTH. ACTH then stimulates zona fasciculata, which then produces cortisol. Cortisol binds to the cortisol binding globulin that is present in the blood and affects the peripheral tissues. The effect of cortisol can be abbreviated by a big fib. Cortisol also has a negative feedback on the pituitary gland as well as the hypothalamus. A big fib stands for A stands for increase in appetite, B for increase in blood pressure, I for increase in insulin resistance, G for increase in gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, F for decrease in fibroblast activity, which is decrease in wound healing, I for decrease in immune and inflammatory activity, and B for decrease in bone formation. The last hormone we're going to talk about is aldosterone. Now let's follow the picture above. The liver produces angiotensinogen, which is primarily an inactive hormone. It only gets activated in the presence of renin, which is produced by the kidney in response to decrease in the sodium level in the blood and in case of hypovolemia, in other words, decrease in blood volume, which in turn results in decrease in blood pressure. 
Renin acts on the angiotensinogen and converts it to angiotensin 1, which passes through the pulmonary capillary and is acted upon by the enzyme produced by the lungs called the angiotensin converting enzyme. This converts the angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 affects a lot of tissues. Here, it stimulates the zona glomerulosa to produce aldosterone. This loop is known as renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Aldosterone acts on the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct to increase the sodium reabsorption, reverse hypervolemia and hence increase the blood volume and blood pressure, increase in potassium excretion. Other factors that cause the release of aldosterone production are increase in potassium concentration and increased production of ACTH. Adrenal medulla is responsible for producing hormones used for sympathetic or fight-or-flight response. It gets stimulated by the splanchnic nerves originating from the lateral horn of the thoracic region of the spinal cord. The splanchnic nerve fibers go and stimulate the chromaffin cells, which are the cells of the adrenal medulla, to release epinephrine and norepinephrine. The acetylcholine released by the splanchnic nerves bind to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on the chromaffin cells, causing the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine into the bloodstream. Epinephrine and norepinephrine belong to a group of hormones called the catecholamines. Epinephrine is, as most people know epinephrine by its other name, adrenaline. This hormone rapidly responds to stress by increasing your heart rate and rushing blood to the muscles and brain. It also spikes your blood sugar level by converting glucose by converting glycogen to glucose in the liver. Glycogen is the liver's storage form of glucose. Norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline, this hormone works with epinephrine in response to stress. However, it can cause vasoconstriction, which is the narrowing of the blood vessels. This results in high blood pressure.